Hello, my name is Corinne Schaefer, and I'm a co-founder of Creative Operations, and I would like to welcome you to the behind the scenes of Brooke DeRosa's Christmas All Year. So we decided early on that we wanted to invest in doing remote collaborations. And at that point, Brooke had pitched the idea of doing a Christmas piece. One of the things that I love about Brooke DeRosa's music is that it's so visual and it's so cinematic. So Brooke sent over the orchestration of Christmas All Year, and I immediately saw an advent calendar. There's this leitmotif that keeps repeating and it just sounded like doors opening. So I had this idea of the advent calendar with the doors opening to reveal the different performers. And of course that lends itself well to the format that most of the remote collaborations are filmed, which is um, rectangle. So I thought that it would fit perfectly. So here is my concept board for Christmas all year. Normally, I'm very old school and create a collage with pictures. Here, I picked out some key images that I used for inspiration, combined it with the preliminary sketch, and some initial ideas. A concept board allows me to ground my ideas and serves as a reference during the project. It also helps me determine a color palette. I wanted a warm and cozy feel, so I opted for pines, burgundies, and warm browns. When I start a project where I create something, I go about it more organically, but because we had to have a working advent calendar with 24 different doors and windows, I had to use some structure in the project. In order to size things correctly, scale was important. I used standard graph paper where I worked out my initial design. I used one inch per small square in the grid to determine the scale and used that to transfer that to a larger size. That also allowed me to work with a larger format when doing the close-up stop-motion filming on the doors and windows. This made the process easier. Although it appears small in the video, the artwork had to be large enough to manipulate. In addition, scale was important so that when we edited the final project, everything fit together cohesively. So whenever you start a video, it's helpful to have a storyboard which acts as a map for the video and how you're going to tell the story. Here is one page from the storyboard. You will see the final video follows this exactly. To help plan for the shots and to help in the final editing, I always include where in the music this takes place and for how long. Because we have the 24 doors and windows for the advent calendar, I created a map so we knew exactly where everyone should be. So we decided early on that we wanted to use stop motion animation to open the doors and windows and really bring the piece to life. So here I am in the room where I did the stop motion animation. You will see here that I have the full advent calendar. Again, it's probably larger than you were thinking. And at this point, all of the doors and windows have been cut out to reveal the green screen which again is just this really bright lime green foam board. I also have the individual close-up shots here that I used for the stop motion. Again, large enough so that I could work with it. This is actually only my second time working with stop motion. Stop motion is a technique where the camera is repeatedly stopped and started to give the impression of movement. So one of the very important things to remember with stop motion animation is that you need controlled lighting. You do not want to rely on any natural light when filming. So that's part of the reason why I chose this room to film where I could close the blinds and bring in whatever additional lighting that I needed. To film the stop motion, I needed to have the ability to shoot down at the images with good lighting but also not to create any shadows. This made using the ring light a great solution. In creating the design, I used similar backgrounds so that when it came to filming the stop motion, it was only three windows and two doors. So to create the illusion of the doors and windows opening, I had two tools. One is this very sticky, tacky putty that you can get at a craft store, um, which I used bit by bit kind of building 
on the inside of the door to open this way. Then once it reached a certain height, I could not use this putty anymore without it being seen. So I used a needle and thread and then pulled the door slowly in increments to get it to fully open. In stop motion, you are dealing with small changes that create a big impact. Setting up your shots so you have complete control is key. Any unintentional changes or shifting will ruin your shot. For something of the quality of Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, for example, they are shooting all day to just get a minute's worth of material. So basically, the more shots you take with very small changes of movement, the smoother the overall finish of the product will be. When I shot the doors and windows, I would take about 30 shots per change in movement of the door or window, and it would take me about an hour after setup to film each door or window opening. So this was my very first time working with green screen. The idea behind the green screen is that it makes it very clear what needs to be eliminated and replaced with video. Normally you would pick a color that is not in your project so that it's very easy to eliminate. It doesn't actually have to be green. I've learned that it could be blue or even pink. So I filmed all of the stop motion animation on my iPhone using an app called Stop Motion Studio, which is extremely user friendly. It includes a timer, so you can time how long you have between shots. You can delete pictures and frames as you work, and you can export it as a movie, a flipbook, or individual images. So none of this would have been possible without Taiju Shao of Dust Studios in Hamburg, who was our videographer on the project. He combined all of the different components to bring this video to life. He is also our director of photography and videographer on the Alice in Wonderland videos. And we are just so grateful that we are able to collaborate with him. I'm also personally grateful because he fielded a lot of my questions about green screen and the stop motion and how best to create all of the different working pieces. I hope you enjoyed this video of the behind the scenes of Brooke DeRosa's Christmas All Year. Stay tuned for future projects.